Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I wanted to see how the AMD APUs are doing on the mobile side of things. So I went out and bought this laptop from Asus. This is their X555D, and it's powered by an AMD A10 8700P APU. And we're going to put it through its paces and uh, see how well it performs. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I purchased this with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into the hardware and then we will see how well it performs. So we've got a 15.6 inch display on this one, 1366 by 768. Does not look all that great because you are essentially looking at a 720p display at 15.6 inches. So not the most attractive looking display. It is a TN display, not an IPS display. So the viewing angles will uh, drop off quite a bit as you move off to the side of the screen. It actually looks better on camera than it does in person. It's kind of funny, um, but it's, you know, it's a passable display for what you would typically pay. This computer is two $299 as you see it. But because it's so big and it has that 15 inch form factor, you do have a, a pretty decent sized keyboard here with a number pad as well. Uh, the keys here for the letters are bigger than the number pad keys, but uh, it's typable. Not, not great, but not bad either. I did notice though that the casing flexes quite a bit when you're typing on it. So you'll definitely feel like you're uh, using a cheaper, more of a commoditized PC here. Uh, the trackpad is actually pretty nice. It's not that spongy. It's very responsive. It really feels pretty decent. Uh, Asus has been doing some nice stuff with their trackpads and they put a nice one on this one that is definitely usable. Now because we've got a big computer here we've got a lot of ports so your power adapter goes in here uh, you've got your uh, Ethernet over here VGA HDMI two USB 3.0 ports you got a Kensington lock on this side over on the other side we have a, a SD card reader you've got a USB 2.0 slot headset microphone adapter there and guess what an optical drive we don't see this on too many low-end PCs these days so this is a uh, not only just an optical drive but it's also a DVD burner too so you can uh, burn your own DVDs if you're still into that uh, and get, get by pretty nicely uh, with your media. Now this is powered again by that AMD A10 APU. We've got four gigabytes of RAM that come natively with it but what I did is I upgraded it to eight because I was curious to see if that might make a performance difference. I'll talk about that in a minute so there is a, a way to get at the RAM here in this little slot there. I did try taking it apart but I usually resell these laptops and I didn't want to risk damaging the case. It didn't come off uh, very easily when I unscrewed everything. So I think there might be more screws under these rubber feet and I didn't want to damage anything. Uh, but I would imagine the hard drive is probably upgradable uh, because this has a 500 gigabyte spinning hard drive and those are usually very replaceable. So if you wanted to get an SSD in there or something, uh, you could probably crack open the case, risking damaging it perhaps to uh, get that hard drive upgraded also. But it is a lot easier to get at the RAM just by popping off that uh, cover there, which is what I did. So this one is now running with eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the weight on this is four 4.65 pounds or 2.1 kilograms. So on the heavier side of things, but uh, it's actually lighter compared to many other 15 inch laptops I've looked at. So uh, not bad on the weight at all. Battery life isn't so great though. You only get about five and a half to six hours of normal usage out of it. So enough to get through maybe half a work day or so, uh, but not enough really to go on the road with it without a lot of power available to you. All right, let's start off with some web browsing. We're going to take a look at a 1080p 60 frames per second video from my YouTube channel to begin with. And uh, this is always a good way to see how well a low-end PC will do with some of the real world things you might encounter while you're browsing the web. I'm just gonna skip ahead to a faster motion scene of this video. And uh, so far I haven't seen any drop frames playing back 60 frames per second content on YouTube and other platforms. So I think uh, you're going to have a very good online video experience with this device. And on the Octane benchmark test, which measures how well it does on the web running in Google Chrome, we get a score of 13,153. So it does put it below what you might see with an Intel i3 based machine, but it is very competitive against other 200 and $250 PCs you might encounter. So for a little more money, you get a lot more performance, especially when you're browsing the web. I also found it does very well when you're working on documents too. So we've got Microsoft Word here running with our favorite newsletter template that really taxes the system a little bit. And as you can see, I can move uh, graphical items around here and resize them. And it seems to be keeping up pretty well with all of that. So I don't think you'll have any issue doing Word, Excel, and other Microsoft Office documents on it. All right, let's take a look at some gaming now. And I was hoping that the AMD APU on here would surprise me like it did on that desktop computer and give us a really good gaming performance for a very little price. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case with this particular laptop. So I am playing Minecraft right now. We are getting a really good frame rate here of around 50 to 70 frames per second, depending on what's going on. Usually it's hovering in the 60s, as you can see right here. So it actually does uh, very well with this game, but uh, it's not as great as it could be for a couple of reasons. Now, the first thing I did with this computer was 
was uh, put in an extra four gigabytes of RAM to bring it to eight because my experience with other machines has been that uh, when you add a second RAM chip, you get a second channel of RAM to feed data to the graphics side of this chip faster. Unfortunately, uh, both the internal RAM and the chip I added are running as a single channel, so we're not getting the best possible performance we can uh, out of the APU in this machine. But for Minecraft, it's going to do, I think, a lot better than perhaps another $300 PC running with an Intel chip might. So we are seeing uh, some decent performance here, but uh, you're not going to see that on some other games. So let's take a look now at Counter-Strike Go. All right, let's take a look at my settings here. I've got everything pretty much turned down pretty low on here, and I'm not getting the best frame rate as a result, even after uh, dropping the settings down to that level. So we're looking at maybe uh, 16 to 20 frames per second, give or take, uh, depending on what's going on on screen. So this is definitely not going to be a good Counter-Strike experience. So this is probably not the uh, holy grail of the uh, $300 gaming laptop we were hoping to find, but we'll keep looking. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 3,171, which isn't bad for a $300 PC, but obviously not good enough to run uh, AAA titles or Counter-Strike or many of the other games that people would like to play. So you can compare that to an i3-based uh, Lenovo ThinkPad 13, which does cost a little bit more, but uh, gives you an idea of what native Intel graphics will do on an i3 uh, versus what you get on this one. So it'll be better than a lot of those cheaper PCs, but again, not good enough to uh, run some of the big stuff. But a lot of the uh, indie games on Steam, a lot of the 2D games and whatnot should run pretty nicely on here. And uh, Minecraft, does surprisingly well too, but unfortunately uh, not quite there for gaming. But it does do very well with multimedia, and we've got uh, Cody running here, and I've got an H.265 HEVC file to play back, and this is a 4K file that it's down converting to 720p, so we're really throwing the book at this thing. And as you can see here, it's decoding quite well, no drop frames, it's playing back smoothly, uh, despite all of the uh, challenges that that file puts on the, uh, the processor to decode, so that works out pretty well. Uh, I found also Blu-ray MKVs play back okay, although sometimes they get a little glitchy when they start up. It's looking okay now now, but sometimes if I jump to different parts of the movie, it takes a second for it to uh, get everything back in line here. So you can see we're getting some glitchiness, and this will uh, fix itself in a minute or two once the uh, codec catches up. So I don't know if this is something wrong with the decoder. Uh, this glitchiness goes away again after it's been playing for a few seconds. It catches up and uh, does better, but uh, that was one area that I noticed that was a little out of whack on Cody. It could just be uh, some software issues related to the APU, but uh, once the movie gets going, it plays back just fine. So for a $300 computer, this actually performs performs pretty well, but it doesn't perform as well as it could. And I'd be very curious to hear from you if there are other AMD-based laptops I should be taking a look at around this price point that maybe have that dual-channel RAM implemented that should give us much better performance than what we're seeing out of here at the moment. So I do think that this chip in here uh, can perform better, but the way they've configured the computer, probably for uh, cost reasons, is not taking full advantage of it, especially when it comes down to graphics. But it isn't a bad laptop for the price, but I think it could do better. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.